Trillo Nation, so I've had a few of you ask me what I think as a law enforcement, I think about that unfortunate incident that occurred to uh, Mr. George Floyd in Minneapolis. Very unfortunate. Um, we're still waiting for the medical examiner's report to find out exactly what killed them, but it's pretty safe to understand and to see that um, that knee on the neck had a lot to do with it. As a cop, as a cop who's been training jujitsu for 24 years, man, I've been, I've done, I've probably done a thousand chokes, and I've probably put been put to sleep numerous times throughout those 24 years. So with that said, I have a pretty good professional understanding of how chokes work from the applicational point of view, not the medical point of view, okay? So, but with that said, I also understand how blood flows, okay? Blood flows to and from the neck, all starts from the heart and the aorta and roll up, roll up and down through the sides of the neck, through the carotid arteries, common arteries, there's two of them, then they branch out, and then there's many arteries around the neck. But for the most part, the main ones you're affecting when you apply a stranglehold are the carotid arteries. Now the jugular veins are deeply inside, they, they also support blood flow to and from the head. But for the most part, the ones that you're really affecting are the ones close to the surface, which are the carotid arteries. Now when we apply pressure to the sides of the neck, that's what's putting them out. They're still able to breathe, but there's, no, there's a lack of oxygen in the blood flow, and after a few seconds, the person passes out. Believe it or not, it's actually painless. With that said, not saying that a, neck, a, a knee on the neck is painless, that is painful. But when you block one side of the neck, there's still blood flowing, which gives the person time to speak and say, hey, listen, I can't breathe, or I'm having trouble breathing. There's technically still breathing, but they're slowly passing out. This is a common choke that we use in jiu-jitsu all the time. We, we, should, we call it a shoulder lock, but it can be done with the knee. Where I'll go here in the side, <coughs> excuse me, side control position here. I'll take my hand here and I'll secure under it. I drive my shoulder into his chest and I push high into his neck. Sometimes I'll lean into it and if I just keep it for a few seconds, he's tapping out. What was that? Five seconds? This guy did this for what? Oh, minutes. 10 minutes? About seven minutes. Seven minutes? Seven minutes? Even if he didn't think he was choking the guy out, put your knee across somebody's neck for seven minutes. That's completely, that's never taught in police work. So I, I can't justify absolutely anything of what that officer did, but I'm not gonna talk about what he did so much. I'm just talking about how it works. Now, the victim in this case, had his hands cuffed, he was facing to the right, and the officer had his knee across the back. Uh, I'm not sure if the leg was up or not. I'm not gonna use the knee, because that's pretty bad. But just to show you how the blood flow is applied, I'm just gonna use the forearm here on the side of his neck, and I haven't pressed down yet. I'm gonna apply a little pressure, and you see how many seconds and he's gonna hold it until he absolutely feels that he's about to go out safe. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna drive it. Look, start counting the seconds. Three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I'm not even eight. putting. That was eight seconds. And, and guys, I'm not even putting a lot of pressure. I mean, my knees are still on the ground. Imagine, and this officer looked like he was 200 and some pounds. 200 pounds on the neck, I'm doing it on his back, and driving down, oh my gosh. That's not something that they teach in police work. So, I, I pretty much can guarantee you that this officer, if he knew what he was doing, he's completely negligent, easy to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he's guilty of excessive force. The other officers, it, it could also be the point where that no officer there absolutely had any idea of what this guy was actually doing, or that what he was doing was gonna to lead to this gentleman's uh, death. Yes, guys, when you put somebody out, the moment they put out, you need to stop. 
if you continue going after a certain number of, of minutes, and I don't know the exact uh, time frame, but like anything, anything after a minute, you're, you're in deep, deep, deep waters. And you don't want to go there because if you, if you go anywhere past just a few seconds, once he passes out, you're starting to call, get into that area where you're starting to create brain damage. That happens after, I'm not sure after what time frame, but I'm pretty certain that anything after a minute, you're, you're, you're in dead trouble. So that's my take on it. It's, it's a shoulder lock to the side of the neck. I can't, I can't even, as a cop, I can't even justify uh, what he did, but I hope that, I can only say that it takes incidents like this to create awareness and a lot of department, I've been teaching cops jujitsu for the last couple of years and, and for the most part, most departments are starting to pick up and learn this beautiful art of jujitsu and how I can easily control somebody without having to really hurt him at all or hurt myself. But when you don't know what you're doing, you get incidents like this. When you have a cop and you don't train him correctly how to go hands-on with somebody, they're gonna to resort to the impact weapons, they're gonna to resort to their handgun, or to brute tactics like this, which are not even taught in, in, in most departments. So if you're a cop out there, you need to sign up to a good jiu-jitsu school. And I, I, I can't say that stuff like this won't happen to somebody that trains jiu-jitsu, but it's a lot less. And for the most part, you don't see those cops, those good cops that do train, you don't hear about them in the news because what they do every day, what I did for 20 something years, was not newsworthy because I wasn't hurting anybody. So that's the message. Start training some jujitsu and get the real tools that you need to go out there and provide a service for our community so that we can build that trust again with the community because it only takes one or two bad apples to ruin it from everybody. That one officer may be bad, but there's I can bring you 20 something, 200 more other officers that do good work like anything in, in life guys there's good people and there's bad people in every profession so stay safe stay humble and we're out